Hey everyone, it's Craig Syracuse of Walk in Faith. I'm excited, I'm honored to be sitting down with Alex McFarlane, who's in North Carolina, who is, and I'm not even going to try to explain your resume, but evangelist, an author, a professor. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background, Alex? Well, for one thing, Craig, I'm very happy to be on with you today. I really appreciate the, the chance to get to know you better and talk and hear about the exciting things you're doing. But, um, you know, I, I'm a guy that uh, I'm a Christian and I've done a number of things in church and in academics and in broadcasting. But, uh, you know, the, the main thing that we've been doing for the last 25 years is things related to Christian apologetics, which relates to the evidence for Christianity. So, um, uh, you know, personally, I'll say it this way. I'm a guy who's on my way to heaven, and I want to bring as many people with me as I can. I want people to find Christ as their personal Savior. I love that. And I saw, too, in your resume, you worked with Lee Strobel. Is that oh, yeah. Strobel is great. I mean, great friend for 25 years. Um, Lee Strobel, as, as your viewers might know, wrote The Case for Christ. Um, he has a law degree from Yale University in New Haven, Connecticut, and was for many years an atheist. Mm -hmm. And he was a journalist and legal affairs editor for the Chicago Trib and um, was a skeptic. He began to look at the evidence. He became a believer and he wrote one of the best selling Christian books of all time, The Case for Christ. And uh, oh my goodness, I've, I've known him since the late 90s. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal thinker and a great individual. Now, just out of curiosity, did you know him when he was an atheist, or did you know him when he, when he sort of found Christ? Did you, what was your relationship like back then? Interesting. Um, one of my professors in graduate school, who became a great personal friend, is a guy named Gary Habermas, H-A-B-E-R-M-A-S. Habermas, uh, quite literally, is the world expert on the resurrection of Christ. Gary Habermas did his PhD at Michigan State. And um, I remember I was in a grad program and Strobel told me, I mean, uh, Habermas told me, he said, yeah, there's a guy that I've been uh, corresponding with who's, who's looking at uh, the evidence for the resurrection. Wow. And um, a few years goes by and Strobel, you know, not only became a believer, but wrote this blockbuster. It really is a magnificent work, The Case for Christ. And if you see the Strobel movie, and, and a movie has been made about Strobel's journey from atheism to Christ, Gary Habermas is very prominent in that movie. Now, we started a series of conferences in the late 90s called Truth for a New Generation, or TNG. And I said to Habermas, this was like Christmas of 98 or 99. I said, hey, that Strobel guy you mentioned, uh, can you give me his telephone number? And he said, yeah. And I called him up, I called Lee Strobel, and uh, super nice guy, just, and you know what's really wild? I mean, Craig, Strobel is a brilliant intellect, meticulous thinker, and I mean, when it comes to, you know, moving from unbelief to faith, I mean, he's no pushover. Mm -hmm. He came to faith in Christ because of the compelling evidence, but um, super nice guy, and he agreed to speak at one of our conferences, and you know, we just became friends. I was actually president of a small school in Charlotte, North Carolina. We had a, a college and a graduate school, and um, I gave Lee Strobel an honorary doctorate. He wow. was commencement speaker for graduation one year, and we bestowed an honorary doctorate on him, and he is definitely worth it. But I, I, I got to know him shortly after he became a Christian. Yeah, I, I actually, I covered the film uh, a few years ago. I loved the book. I, I liked the film, but the book was fantastic. I actually, there's a few people that I recommended the book whenever they say, you know, my son isn't a believer. My son is spiritual. They always have issues. I say, you need to read that book because that book, it's, it's, it goes in such depth and it's a book I always think about. I, I never had the chance to meet him, but what a story. Uh, so now, you know, we're all handling this pandemic. We're all in this situation now, which is, has been very stressful for all of us. And I've noticed on social media, a lot of the youth, has been, they've been really connecting to their faith. They've been using the social media. They've been using streaming devices to ask for prayers, to you know, pray as a group, to adoration, all of these different methods. And I love it. I think social media is being used for the right reasons. But you know, what happens now when life gets back to the, the new normal? How do we build a foundation of faith? How do we instill these values so when life gets back to normal, we don't put God back in the box or back in the closet, we continue to build a relationship with God? Well, that's a great question. Uh, and do you know what, Craig, you're the first person who's asked me that. I mean, I've done a lot of media about the pandemic and all that, but you're the first person who's really asked me this question. Thank you. And, and I would say this, you know, um, 
obviously we're, we're sad when people are sick and people are hurting and pe some people have died and families are bereaved and we're, we're sorry for that. But you know, ultimately, I mean, if there is a silver lining to this otherwise dark cloud, it might be that it causes people to think about life and death and turn to God. And, you know, people are, are asking, what is normal going to look like if we do and when we do get back to normal? Um, there's some things about normal that we might not want to go back to. And that's just living for the moment and being just materialistic and all that. Um, I, you know, I would just beg people to turn toward God at this time because physically people are scared for their health. Economically, oh my goodness, my heart breaks for people that are not able to work. And, and myself, do you know, I mean, for 22 years, I've been traveling as a speaker and I've got you know, about 30% of my entire income that's gone for the year because, hey man, if I don't travel and speak, I don't get paid. So uh, I, I know the frustration of sitting home staring at the four walls, you know, while uh, ain't nothing going on but the rent. I know that. <laughs> but, but let me say, folks, uh, God cares about where you are in your life's journey. And sometimes God in his mercy has to get our attention. And Craig, what I, my prayer is that the whole wide world, we would think about um, our soul. That, you know, hey, whether it's a pandemic or whether it's a car wreck or whether it's old age, everybody's going to die sometime. Look, everybody's going to die. Interestingly, and, and I would say to folks listening carefully, the COVID-19 has not increased the death rate because everybody was going to die anyway. Now, it's sadly caused some people to die prematurely, but look, everybody dies. Everybody is mortal. And so I'm hoping this will cause people to think about the state of their soul and realize that through Jesus Christ, our sins can be forgiven. We can get a, a, a do-over. Our, our conscience can be clean, and, and we can turn to Christ, be saved. And then whenever death does come, whether by, you know, car wreck, disease, old age, whatever, whenever we leave this world, step into eternity, we'll be ready because we turned to Christ. So how does someone, if there's someone out there that doesn't have a relationship with Christ, doesn't know how to pray, how do they build that relationship? How do they pray? How do they, you know, what are the, some of the things that they can do during this time? Great question. Well, hey, let me give a little illustration. Um, there's a highway near here called Interstate 40, I-40 East to West, and I spoke at a conference a couple of years ago. And on the way home, I got pulled over. The blue light comes on. I thought, wait a minute, I don't think I was speeding. What happened was I was w driving and I didn't have a seatbelt on. So the cop writes me a ticket for 162.50. I was in uh, Western North Carolina, and uh, the particular car that I had at that time put a greasy mark on my shirt. And I said, hey, I'm not wearing my seatbelt because it makes this grease on my shirt, but I'll wear it from now on, right? We cool? He goes, yep, uh, you wear it from now on. Here's your ticket, 162.50. Now listen to this. A few weeks went by and I didn't want to drive all the way back there and appear in court. And you know, it's $162, it's a lot of money. So I called this 1-800 number on the ticket. And they said, if it's not a moving violation, and no points you can pay with your MasterCard. So I call, I give this lady the number, and she's like, give me that number again. So she says, hang on. So she's gone, she's gone, I'm holding, I'm waiting. The lady comes back. She says, your ticket has been paid. Wow. And I said, well, wait a minute, did they dismiss it or something? She goes, no, no, look, your court date hasn't even happened. You weren't wearing your seatbelt, you broke the law. She said, I don't know how, but your ticket's been paid. Now listen to this. She said, look, sir, I could take your credit card number. You could pay this ticket or you can accept that somebody's already paid it for you. Maybe the cop was, hears me on the radio. I don't know. Maybe he paid it, but here's the deal about life and about eternity. You could pay for your own sins, but that would mean separation from God eternally. And the Bible calls that hell, or you could accept that somebody's paid your ticket already. Jesus Christ, when he went to the cross, very historically verified, I teach on this. I've, I've researched it for 30 years, written about it for 20, taught on it in 50 states and five continents. I've researched this, gone to the Holy Land, you name it. Friends, I'm saying this is real. There was a man named Jesus, claimed to be the son of God, 
rose from the dead. And if you will turn to Christ and you'll say, Lord, I, I am sorry for my sins. And I believe you are the son of God. And on that cross, when you paid for the sins of the world, you paid for my sins also. And I'm accepting that. And I'm trusting you. Please save me. Craig, the, the beautiful thing, Jesus is as close by as a prayer. And if people will call on Christ, they can be saved today, right now, this minute. Now, Christian birth is, is an event where you put your trust in, in the Lord. Christian growth is this wonderful lifelong adventure where God shapes you and grows you. And, and, and you know, I think skeptics sometimes, they think that Christianity is just something people do out of fear, but it's not that. Yes, Christianity prepares us for eternity, but Christianity um, shapes and enhances who we are right now today. And um, years ago, I, I had a skeptic that came to Christ, and he said, you know, Alex, I'm glad to be saved. I've trusted the Lord, and I know I'll go to heaven when I die. He said, but you know, the thing about Jesus and Christianity it's just a better way to live. And that's what I would say, folks, if, if you have questions or whatever, um, the Lord loves you. And in, in John 6, verse 37, Christ said, the one who comes to me, I will not reject. I mean, that's amazing. God, the son says, if you come to me, I will not reject you. You can turn to Christ right now today. But you know what? For some people, it's kind of a, they got to process some stuff. Um, I'd love to correspond with any of your viewers and they got questions or whatever you know I, I, may i give my email can oh, I, do that? I would i would love that i would love for you to give more information because i think there's a lot of people out there that are looking to turn to christ you know and they maybe they don't know they don't know the outlet they don't know well they have doubts they have questions so if you could share that that would be great sure my email is alex at alex mcfarland.com that's a-l-e-x at and my, my full name, Alex McFarland, M-C-F-A-R-L-A-N-D, Alex at alexmcfarland.com. It'll come right to me. I'll um, do my best to give you a, an answer. But Craig, you know, something that's interesting is that God is not upset with us when we have questions. I mean, if you're seeking and if you're trying to find the answer, you're not trying to play chess with God and say, aha, God, I got you in checkmate. But if you're, if you're really trying to find out, is this real? Is this true? In the Old Testament, there's a, a book called Isaiah. And in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, God makes this invitation. He says, come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are as scarlet, they can be as white as snow. So I want to say to everybody, you know, God is not mad at you. God is not going to slap you on the wrist if you have some questions. Um, but understand that with the pursuit of answers really comes the accountability to respond to those answers and, and the responsibility because um, one day, so here's the deal. One day God is going to evaluate what we did with the light that we had. And uh, here in Mer America, we've got everybody from Billy Graham to, to you and Craig and, there's so much good shows. God's allowed me to write some books and uh, we're, we're very accountable because there's, there's a lot of people who haven't heard much about Jesus, but here in America, people have heard the message. So I, I just want to challenge your, your viewers um, as God is knocking on the door of your heart, open up and let him in. That's beautiful. And this is the perfect opportunity for people to, to build a relationship to seek God, to pray. I would, I would advise everyone, reach out to Alex, use this time wisely. Don't just go, you know, go through the storm. Like they say, grow through the storm. Alex, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Next time, hopefully we have a little more time to chat. I know you got a lot going on, but I, I'm very grateful for the time we had. Yeah, I appreciate it so much. Hey, uh, what is your uh, website? Where can I find all your stuff online? My stuff is Walk in Faith, so you can see it on YouTube. Otherwise, Net TV is where we have Walk in Faith. And I'll send you a link, and, and to the viewers, they can watch it on YouTube, on social media, or on Net TV, which broadcasts out of Brooklyn, New York. Well, you're doing a great work, and I have such respect for you. And it's great to make the friendship. And, and so I feel very honored to be with you, my oh, friend. Thank you so much. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Always remember, you have the ability to inspire and evangelize through words and actions. God bless.